Since its release in 1977, Star Wars has had an extreme influence and impact on entertainment, culture, and our world. George Lucas created a timeless masterpiece. Fans of Star Wars, for decades, were content to look at the past while hoping for more Star Wars in their future. After Episode 3 hit theaters in 2005, fans would keep Star Wars alive through games, animated series, novels, comic books, and various forms of collecting, while always wanting more. Soon, for all fans, there would be a new, new hope. I am proud to announce the Walt Disney Company is acquiring Lucasfilm, the global entertainment company founded by George Lucas and the home of the legendary Star Wars franchise. In October of 2012, Star Wars took over the news with a simple announcement. The Walt Disney Company purchased Lucasfilm for $4.1 billion. Simultaneously, Disney announced they were in the pre-production for what would become the first movie in a new Star Wars sequel trilogy. George Lucas announced, It's now time for me to pass Star Wars on to a new generation of filmmakers. Disney CEO Bob Iger said upon the purchase, This is one of the great entertainment properties of all time, one of the best branded and one of the most valuable, and it's just fantastic for us to have the opportunity to both buy it run it and grow it. This was a promising forward-looking statement from the Disney CEO. Earlier in 2012, Kathleen Kennedy had been promoted to co-chair of Lucasfilm. Obviously I've been talking about retiring for several years now. I wanted to get into sort of another stage of life where I'm not in the film business anymore and I don't have to run a corporation. And it occurred to me one day that the perfect person to take over the company was Kathy. It's just such a perfect fit. The main thing is to protect these characters, make sure that they still continue to, to live in the way that you created them, and that the universe of Star Wars continues to grow. Now, under the Walt Disney Company's control, Mrs. Kennedy was given full reign of the franchise. Kennedy's choice of director for the first new movie was none other than J.J. Abrams, who would also write the script with Star Wars alumni Lawrence Kasdan. Abrams and his production company Bad Robot were not strangers on the science fiction scene. Most fans seemed to believe that Abrams was a good choice since he was a self-proclaimed Star Wars junkie. It was obvious that J.J. Abrams liked to play in the science fiction sandbox. Based on critical reviews of Abrams' past work, with series such as Lost and his rebooting of the sci-fi juggernaut Star Trek, some people were skeptical as he was given creative control. But Star Wars is too big to fail, right? Kathy Kennedy and I sat down and started talking about what was possible that uh, I found myself really hungry to do this movie. Uh, Kathy brought up of a character asking who is Luke Skywalker. Of course, working with Kathy and Lawrence Kasdan and, uh, you know, this incredible uh, cast. It just was something that was uh, very hard to deny. After months of rumors and virtual silence from director J.J. Abrams' Disney and Lucasfilm, the cast of Star Wars Episode 7 has finally been revealed. As we've expected for quite some time, original cast members Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, and Mark Hamill will all reprise their role in the new trilogy. In addition to some of the original cast members, the film will include a slew of new actors, you guys, including Adam Driver, who has long been rumored to be playing the main villain in the film. Other previously rumored names that have been confirmed include Attack the Block's John Boyega and About Time star Domhnall Gleeson. The cast will also include Lord of the Rings' Andy Serkis, which is awesome, film legend Max von Sydow, Inside Lewin Davis star Oscar Isaac, and relative newcomer Daisy Ridley. There has been an awakening. Have you felt it? In late 2014, the first teaser trailer for the new Star Wars sequel landed, and it was titled The Force Awakens. Fans seemed excited. The new trailer accomplished its mission. 
Star Wars was once again the talk of this galaxy. People wondered, chatted, and posted on YouTube. Many had questions such as, who is this new character John Boyega is playing? Who is the girl? Could she be the daughter of Princess Leia, perhaps? There was also excitement about this new cute little droid. Then, in the trailer, X-Wings. And of course, how could you not walk away perplexed by the custom lightsaber? Finishing off with the majestic Millennium Falcon, fans were hooked. We didn't know much, but Star Wars was back. This was a rallying call for the saga's legion of fans, and it seemed to work. Finally, December 18th, 2015, the day had come. Star Wars Episode 7 is breaking all kinds of box office records and making Mickey Mouse look like a genius with his $4 billion purchase of the franchise from George Lucas. Star Wars The Force Awakens has already raked in an estimated $238 million at U.S. theaters, the biggest opening weekend in history. The movie did $248 million on opening weekend, which was the highest opening weekend of all time. The reaction from fans was mostly positive in the beginning. Hey. Fantastic, amazing. I'd see it again right now if I could. Oh, the movie was awesome, man. Yeah, it takes me back to being a little kid. The prequels, I, I reckon 100% better than all of the prequels uh, and on par with the original series. I can see that the, the mantle is being passed on and it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. JJ Abrams did a, a great job in uh, directing this movie. Yeah, look forward to number two. More than my expectations, but remember the dark side of the Force will always prevail. Star Wars The Force Awakens is being called the film of a generation. Star Wars Episode 7 The Force Awakens has finally arrived! <sighs> yes! Finally! The Force Awakens, ladies and gentlemen, and I can safely tell you, Christian, I've seen the movie, and it kicks ass. This is the movie you want to relaunch the greatest franchise of all time. It is so much better than the prequels, which I don't hate. It's not quite as good as the classic trilogy films, in my opinion, but my God, there's so much to love here. There absolutely is a lot to love, and what it also does is that you have to remember how much material that J.J. Abrams is cramming in 30 years of Star Wars lore into one movie, and I thought he did a really good job in doing that. Basically, the movie, so good. <laughs> Thank you, J.J. Abrams, for saving Star Wars. What's up, chodes? We just saw Star Wars. This is a spoiler. Sorry. Episode 7, The Force Awakens. Okay, first of all, did the movie disappoint? No. It did not disappoint. It did not disappoint. I'm so fucking glad it didn't disappoint. Wait, 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 wait. We haven't had this part of the peanut gallery channel. Oh, yet. yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yes or no, did it disappoint? Um, I will say I thought I'd like it more than I did. I loved The Force Awakens. I went and saw The Force Awakens uh, like six times in theaters. Um, I loved it. I was uh, just so enthusiastic as a Star Wars fan prior to The Force Awakens. What did you think of the movie? I did thought you... it was very exciting. It, exciting? I, I think exciting is the best word to describe it. I felt that the movie pretty much did what it had to do. Many were thrilled to see the return of Harrison Ford reprising his iconic role as Han Solo. John Williams created another beautiful score. There was a new generation of characters. The New Yorker reported Star Wars The Force Awakens, directed by J.J. Abrams, feels young, and as an act of pure storytelling, it streams by with fluency and zip. The Force is with us forever. So I feel honored that I've been allowed to continue the journey. Camera, action! 
what happens to these characters that we know and love. It's a world I want to get back to immediately. Star Wars magic, it does take your breath away. And that is something that George Lucas started and we're definitely carrying that on. I've been a Star Wars fan as an adult and a child. I mean, this is crazy. Just look around. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Every single person who's come to the project has been a huge Star Wars fan. I'm literally shaking. Like, this is insane. It's this cross-generational group of people who are bringing all of those sensibilities to the making of this movie. He signed his action figure. Right here. <laughs> Chewie, we're home. This part of my Star Wars journey is quite different now because now I feel part of the family. We're going back to these stories that people feel intensely about. Some fans, however, had an unsettling feeling that they couldn't quite put their finger on in the beginning. Many fans went to social media to voice both their concerns and their critique of the film. In this video, I want to make the case that The Force Awakens is not a very good film, and also a terrible Star Wars film, so far to say that it is in fact the worst than the prequels. After watching The Force Awakens, I was really hurt and disappointed. Some of the more popular criticisms of The Force Awakens include The Force Awakens is a soft reboot of the franchise, a simple rehashing of A New Hope. The original cast were never reunited on screen. The movie should have focused on honoring the original cast and allow them to pass on the torch to the new cast. Luke Skywalker was in the movie for less than one minute with no lines of dialogue. Rey is too powerful. Captain Phasma is insignificant to the movie. Han Solo is a failed father and husband who abandoned his family. Kylo Ren, the main antagonist, is whiny and childish. The Leia Ray scene after the death of Han Solo. How could they have Chewbacca, Han's best friend, walk by Leia with no thought or mention of what just took place? Why would Leia be embracing Ray in this scene? This is an insult to Chewie's character and just plain bad writing. Even with these criticisms, when the dust finally cleared, there was a reluctant optimism as most fans believed Luke will be in the next movie so it will be good. The plan laid out by Disney was to release a new Star Wars film every two years, continuing the Skywalker saga. As fans left the theater in December of 2015, most began looking ahead to the next installment of this sequel trilogy, which would land on December of 2017. Between films, fans were able to go see Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Most believed that Rogue One was an exceptional Star Wars film, but they yearned for what would be Episode 8. There were so many questions that needed answering, such as where did Rey come from? Who were her parents? How will Luke Skywalker impact this story since he will be back? There was a rumored spoiler that Luke saves Rey when confronting and defeating the Knights of Ren, and there was a great anticipation for such a rumor to be played out. While The Force Awakens was still in production, Disney announced on June 20th, 2014 that Ryan Johnson would write and direct Episode 8 while writing the treatment for Episode 9. Johnson's resume was brief, but influential. He was most known for directing 2012 science fiction film Looper. More recently, he earned a Directors Guild of America award for directing a few highly regarded episodes of Breaking Bad. Kathleen Kennedy had given creative control to J.J. Abrams to jumpstart the sequel trilogy. Now her plan was to give the same degree of control to Ryan Johnson for the middle part of the story and then hand it off to Colin Trevorrow, who would make the final installment. 
You know, I have to say, Ryan Johnson is, I don't have enough accolades to say about him. And I know he's been on the show and yeah. I loved watching his interview because that's so much Ryan. He just had amazingly good time every single day. He's such a huge fan. I mean, from the times that I've talked to Ryan, he's just such a genuinely excited, interested person. And it seemed like he had kind of his whole roadmap out from the beginning. He did. He wrote the script, which I, I'm sure a lot of people don't know necessarily realize. I think it's something that he thought about a long time before he ever put pen to paper. And then he went off, I remember he was in a driving snowstorm up in the mountains, putting the final touches on the script. And then he came back just bubbling over with ideas and excitement. So he has this interesting way that he works where he needs that time alone. And then he's so incredibly collaborative when he comes into the process of making a movie. You know, I think he's done an exceptional job of taking these new characters and some of the legacy characters and moving us to this next place. I think he doesn't answer all the questions. I will say that up front. But okay. there are certain questions he does answer in a really wonderfully provocative way. And I think there'll be some surprises that people aren't expecting. Upon deciding to accept the role of director, Johnson retreated to the mountains where he would pen the script for what would become Star Wars Episode Eight, The Last Jedi. It was unsettling for many, as fans began to realize that Disney's approach to this story wasn't like that of George Lucas. Lucas envisioned most of the saga during the writing process and had his story played out in six movies, Episode One through Six. Unlike their predecessor, Disney's episodes 7 through 9 were not planned in advance. In May of 2017, Ryan Johnson posted on Twitter, When they came to me, there was no mapped story presented beyond The Force Awakens. On February 15, 2016, Lucasfilm released a production announcement video. The movie was 22 months away from release. Fans would stay up to speed on Star Wars in the news while patiently awaiting the next step in the process, the teaser trailer. While waiting for the teaser trailer, the Star Wars galaxy changed forever on December 27, 2016. Good evening, I'm Tom Yamas, in for David tonight, and we begin with the passing of a Hollywood legend and an American original. Carrie Fisher, whose role as Princess Leia in Star Wars vaulted her to pop culture immortality, died today in Los Angeles with her family by her side. She was 60 years old. Fisher, who publicly and at times humorously battled personal demons, went into cardiac arrest on a flight to Los Angeles Friday. The tributes pouring in as we come on the air. Her Star Wars co-star, Mark Hamill, who played Luke Skywalker, tweeting, no words, hashtag devastated. That sentiment echoed tonight across the entertainment galaxy. Tonight, the world is mourning Carrie Fisher, who won so many battles as Princess Leia, but lost the final one in a Los Angeles hospital this morning. A family spokesman issuing a statement saying that Fisher passed away at 8.55 this morning. She was loved by the world, and she will be missed profoundly. This devastating news came just four months after the death of another original cast member, Kenny Baker. Lucasfilm would respond with a beautiful tribute to the princess. On April 14, 2017, fans attended or viewed from afar Star Wars Celebration in Orlando, Florida. The cast seemed to be in high spirits and showed a lot of excitement. The Last Jedi! The Last Jedi! What does it all mean? We have questions, they have answers. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome President of Lucasfilm, Kathleen Kennedy. thank every single one of you out there for showing up and not only showing up but really showing us a lot of love because it gives us the confidence to keep going in that direction thank you thank you we get this is the best fan family in the world man this is you guys are the best the big news however was that the original teaser was released 
similar to the teaser for The Force Awakens, this trailer resulted in many questions. But unlike The Force Awakens, this teaser created a feeling of skepticism for many. It's time for the Jedi to end. What the f What the f I'm all glass eyed, but at the same time, I'm confused. Like, did he say it's time for the Jedi to end? Why is Luke Skywalker saying that it's time for the Jedi to end? What does the title The Last Jedi even mean? Who is The Last Jedi? Is it Luke or Rey? These questions were very concerning for many fans. One more important date would occur before the main event. On October 9th, 2017, fans were able to see the official trailer for The Last Jedi. That might be, that might be one of the best trailers I've ever seen. Um, that was incredible, guys. So I have to ask you the question on everybody's mind, I imagine, for the last two years. Does Luke Skywalker finally get to speak in this film? Though Luke Skywalker didn't have a speaking role in The Force Awakens, the actor Mark Hamill was always up for an interview. Coming back all these years later, what is it like to find Luke's voice again? Not just vocally, but metaphorically. What's it like getting back into this character after all these years? Did you go back and watch the old films? Is he at such a new place that it didn't matter? Well, in, in Seven, you discovered Luke, obviously, is a hermit on this island that he's... There's so much unsaid about where he's been and what he's done. And actors like to write their own backstories. You know, you want to figure out what, what you've done and where you've been. And, but I realized that wasn't really important to the story of Force Awakens. I still made it up myself. And, you know, I, I tried to show it to JJ, and he, you know, was accommodating, but basically patted me on the head, gave me a cookie, and made me go away. <laughs> because, it, you know, whatever, make it up. I mean, they allude to things that have happened. And to a certain extent, you know, it's not Luke's story anymore. But I, I think he's an important part of the overall arc of the saga. And again, there's a lot of mystery about him, even within the film. So you have to fill in your, your own backstory. I'm sure there'll be comic books and video games and novels that tell the story. But uh, like I say, there's... And I shared with Ryan a lot of my own things. I thought, I have to relate to things that are real in my own life to understand where Luke is at this point in his life. I'm so. just going to break in here and make sure that everybody out there realizes he is so significantly important to the ne this next film. You have oh. no idea. Well, that's good to hear. Based on his comments, Hamill came across as being uncomfortable with the movie. As he did more interviews, it seemed that Mark Hamill was doing more than simply promoting the movie. It was as if he was speaking to the fans, giving them a warning and resulting in more reasons to have concern. What was your initial reaction when you found out you were returning just for one scene? When I read Seven, I said, I love everybody's part except mine. <laughs> And on, th on this one, it was similar in the sense that 
I said to Ryan, I'm so surprised how you see Luke. Uh, these films now are being made by uh, children. What's the biggest difference from when we last saw Luke in the end of Return of the Jedi mm -hmm. to when we meet him now in The Last Jedi? Who is this guy? Uh, there's been a lot of stuff like the books, video games that have added to Luke's uh, uh, journey. Yeah. Because he's been looking for these Jedi artifacts yeah. and things. How much does that play into the, what, your performance? How much are you paying attention to this new canon stuff? You, you'll, you'll see. So we signed on. And, uh, you know, like I say, I didn't know, I didn't know it was going to be bought by Disney. Because this was summer of 2012. Then they announced that Disney had bought Lucasfilm uh, around Halloween, which would have been October 30th. Uh, it was announced, and um, you know we didn't know who the director was going to be, and then then they announced J.J. Abrams, and it all came out. It was all all very very exciting, and uh, um, I you know I hope people are happy. It seems like because uh, in Hollywood, remember kids, it's not important if it's of high quality. Only if it makes money. The Jedi must end. It's time for the Jedi to end. Did your vision and Ryan's vision, did it coincide with the way that Luke ends up in this film that, that you thought it would all these years later? No. No, not at all. After how much of Luke Skywalker did you discuss with Colin Trevorrow? Uh, I had discussions with Colin, and I was very excited because we were on the same page in terms of uh, where we wanted to go and how we wanted to see Luke in a way we've never seen him, even in, in this current uh, version. But I don't know what went on. I don't want to know because there's no upside to that story. I mean, I like all those people. I like Kathy and I like Lawrence Kasdan and all the people that were involved in that decision. But sometimes ignorance is bliss and they don't tell me anything. And I think it's just because the attitude of tossing on the go worked really well. So it's 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 uh, it's still keeping that kind of like. Well, see again. I mean, and I told Brian this. It's no surprise. I said I just fundamentally disagree with your concept of this character and how you use him. My character always represented hope and optimism, and now here I am, very pessimistic and disillusioned and sort of demoralized. As many fans began to reflect, there was a realization that Mark Hamill had done the same thing in the not-so-distant past during the production and release of The Force Awakens. I'm gonna go into the movie and recapture your childhood. You're setting yourself up for disappointment. On December 15th, 2017, excited fans were finally able to see Star Wars The Last Jedi. Finally, I get a chance to talk about this movie, and I'm going to start off talking about this movie by going right to it. I loved it. I love this movie, man. We no. love this movie, right? First time I saw it. Yeah. Not so much. Not um, so much, really? Liked it. Liked it. Well, we had a good time at the premiere. I've seen it twice now, yeah. and the second time I saw it, give it I, to me. I loved it the second yeah, time. Yeah, I did. I had a lot of issues with the movie. There's no doubt about mm -hmm. it. It's a very different Star Wars movie. Um, it 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 is something you can tell. Ryan Johnson is you can feel his taste on this entire film. You can, I mean, it is a different movie all the way from start to finish. They take some risks. They take some chances. Um, and I thought it. I thought it paid off for the most part. I thought I'd actually make a video and explain why going after leaving the first time i liked it a lot but there was a lot of things i did not like but now after coming out of the second one this is why i love star wars the last jedi i absolutely love the last jedi as a as a complete film this is a movie that is going to thrill star wars fans it's going to completely enrapture non-Star Wars fans, just people who are going to the movies to watch a movie. They're going to love it. It's such a beautiful balance of, you know, being connected to the overall trilogy, to the overall series, I should say, yet it stands on its own as well as a great motion picture. This is a fantastic movie that fits in very well. It is worthy of the Star Wars name. When we say we love The Last Jedi, it's because of this. It's because The Last Jedi has been doing the thing that Star Wars has tried to do since 1977. 
give people hope. And The Last Jedi was what finally made me feel that too. Thanks for watching. Many fans left the theater shocked, disgusted, and hurt. that it starts lighting my brain cells on fire. This movie is trash, bro. This is a whack, trash, garbage movie, and I can't believe what Disney did to me. JJ built some characters up. He built Poe, he built Ray, and he built Finn He's and Kylo. And guess what they did? This was the worst Star Wars movie I have ever seen. I'm so upset as I can't even talk about it. <laughs> I can't. I'm just like, I don't even... Oh, man. Star Wars Last Jedi is officially the worst Star Wars film I have ever seen in my entire life. I knew this was going to be bad from the second the opening crawl finished. General Hux, who is a comedian, he's a joke. He's a joke character. He might as well be in Spaceballs. He says a your mama joke. He's like, I'm, I'm on hold for your mother or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, what is happening? Uh, and the bombers, apparently, ha gravity applies in space, which is weird. It's pretty much the Empire Strikes Back. That's what it is. Rebels are discovered. Rebels have to escape their base. A, a rebel ship is constantly pursued by the big bad guys. The entire conflict of the galaxy has been reduced to about a dozen, maybe like eight or nine, First Order Star Destroyers chasing three rebel ships. The rebels inexplicably being able to just slightly outrun oh, a, a fleet oh, of Imperial. My, the yeah. whole movie focus is running outer space yeah. like this for an hour. I hate the fact that this movie basically is like one ship chasing another ship. That's the movie. Pew 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 pew. Uh, Ray. <laughs> Ray, once again, did nothing. I didn't really learn jack squat about Ray. The most overly powered, worst written character of all Star Wars history. Why is she so powerful? How did she learn how to be a Jedi with no Jedi training? She flies ships, she speaks Wookiee, she speaks droid, she knows how to just instinctively use a lightsaber, and she's super freaking powerful. You just made her, like, perfect. I mean, she is superwoman. She is just totally beyond... Uh, reproach and then he and then he milks a giant lactating sea moose right. <laughs> utterly disappointing <laughs> oh, God. that was just one of the cringeworthiest scenes i have ever seen and that was another problem that really kind of hammered it at home to me that this is not the movie i thought it would be and Chewie, and I don't know why Ryan Johnson hates Chewbacca so much, but the only thing he made him do was almost eat a yeah, porg. porg. That's yeah. all he did. And again, it was just played out for jokes. Leia in space. Again. What? She died. I was like, oh my god, they killed her. And then she was like, no, nah, I got the force. And then she kind of just like zoomed away. And it's like, what is happening there? <laughs> Then we go on. Leia is incapacitated and this other lady takes over. So in comes Laura Dern with very purple hair. It felt less alien and more like watching a woman going through a midlife crisis. Uh, so Poe wants to know, all right, what are we gonna do? But she's a strong, independent, purple haired woman and she don't need no man. Uh, so she's not gonna tell. Do you have a plan? She's like, oh, I have a plan. Could you tell us? Mm-mm, no. The, the New Order has been destroying ships left and right, as ships literally, as ships literally run out of gas. We are watching people run out of gas in outer space. Is this a Star Wars movie? They kill off Admiral Akbar off screen, 
You don't see him. He says one line in the whole movie. That she is going to run a transport vessel through a Star Destroyer using light speed. It's a cool image. Why has no one ever thought of this in the history of Star Wars? But Yoda! I don't know how Yoda came out of nowhere, and because Luke didn't set it on fire, he created a lightning bolt that struck a tree. And as a ghost, has the ability to call lightning down from the sky or something? Rose, terrible character. Like, honestly, the worst character since Jar Jar Binks. You could have taken her out of the movie, and it would not have changed the plot, the story, nothing. What else can we talk about? That stupid know. planet that they went to? The casino <laughs> planet where we while. learned about where we learned about capitalism and veganism here, I can leave. in Star Wars? You want to talk about that part? Finn turns to Rose and he says, well, I guess it was worth it. You mean losing the entire galaxy was worth you going there to free a few camel horses that will be recaptured five seconds from now? Rose turns to him. She takes a saddle off the camel horse dog and she goes, now it's worth it. What? Rose wasn't going to allow John Boyega's character, Finn, to fly into the battering ram and save everyone. Rose rams her ship into his ship, which could potentially kill both of them. It was like, it wasn't a proper send off to Luke Skywalker. He was just, it's like he didn't. It's... Well, now we know why Mark Hamill said that he fundamentally disagreed with everything they did with his character. The biggest travesty of this entire movie to me, Luke Skywalker. I, re I remember growing up thinking, what can Luke Skywalker do next? And this isn't what I imagined. It would be two long years before the next movie. The Last Jedi was still the talk on the internet, YouTube, and other social media outlets. Many Star Wars moviegoers had been hurt before. After The Phantom Menace premiered on May 19, 1999, many fans had feelings of anger, fear, and aggression, thusly aligning with the dark side of the Force. With that said, Star Wars fandom had never been in such a dark place as it was after The Last Jedi. It seemed that a Star Wars Galaxy Civil War had begun. The two years of waiting would be a dark time for the franchise, and there would be many signs to indicate that the health of this beloved franchise was one of sickness. On September 5th, 2017, Word broke that Colin Trevorrow was leaving Star Wars Episode IX due to creative differences. Speculation ran wild for a week. Then on September 12th, Disney announced that J.J. Abrams would be returning to direct the final installment of the Skywalker saga. There were mixed reactions. So it is official, guys. J.J. Abrams is going to return to Star Wars to write and direct Star Wars Episode Nine. Some big news coming out of the Star Wars world is that J.J. Abrams, the director of The Force Awakens, is now the official director for Episode Nine. And honestly, I'm I'm really happy. Star Wars, you're killing me here. I cannot think of a more Land choice. This is a divisive kind of response that people are having to it online mm -hmm. and even here at IGN. Listen, a lot of us were suckered in many ways about The Force Awakens. I didn't think it was good. A lot of people did. But I would have to say that a lot of us thought that you could have good Star Wars eventually from that movie. It wasn't awful like The Last Jedi. There was a foundation there. But we found out, like I've said before, that it was a foundation built in sand because it is mystery box Jar Jar Abrams behind it all. And don't doubt at all that some of that agenda came from him. As Episode Nine was in production... There was still a debate on the previous movie, Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi. Most comments seemed to be negative towards the movie, but there was an occasional staunch defender. This resulted in the fan base being divided like never before. It started with the website Rotten Tomatoes, 
Commonly used by fans who want to know if a movie is worth watching or not, Rotten Tomatoes said, Star Wars The Last Jedi honors the saga's rich legacy while adding some surprising twists and delivering all the emotion-rich action fans could hope for. The Tomato Meter, which is the rating given by movie critics, scored The Last Jedi above 90%. Conversely, the audience score had it in the 40 percentile range. Moviegoers had never seen a blockbuster film with such a gap between critical and casual reviews. As the galactic fan Civil War raged on, the fanbase was seeing another first. Director and writer Ryan Johnson took to social media to chime in. What's up, geeks and gamers? It's Jeremy coming to you with another video, and today, Ryan Johnson is breaking down right before our very eyes. This guy is losing it, and I don't know if he's just starting to realize the reality that almost every normal person has realized that either A, he's never doing a Star Wars movie again, or B, if he does one, nobody's going to care about it. Johnson would be joined by other notable Lucasfilm employees as the attack and defense continued. Many wondered if any parts of The Last Jedi would be retconned. Some fans implored Lucasfilm to bring back the character of Luke Skywalker and to portray him more like the original trilogy did. Something special about him become the Jedi that saved the universe, that turned his father back from the dark side and looked into the face of evil and said, I will never turn to the dark side because I am a Jedi like my father before me. And that was Luke Skywalker. And stuff like that is what made Star Wars so great. Mark Hamill would continue to let all fans know his feelings while the movie was in production, just as he did with The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. Now Mark Hamill is the voice of Chucky in the new Child's Play movie. It had its LA premiere last night. And Mark confirmed mm -hmm. that he's gonna be in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, but he hopes it's the last time he plays Luke. Is this really, 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 really gonna be your last Star Wars appearance? I sure hope so. Also, on May 10th, 2018, Disney premiered a new film, Solo, A Star Wars Story. Disney hoped that this film would make fans feel better about the state of the franchise. They hoped for the repeated success of Rogue One, which premiered following Episode 7, The Force Awakens. The original directors of Solo, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, would be fired by Lucasfilm over creative differences of the movie, even though a large majority of the film had been shot. They would be replaced by Ron Howard, who had only 11 months to rework the project until its deadline. Solo was widely viewed as the first Star Wars cinematic failure. Many people believed that this failure was the result of the continuing decline of all things Star Wars caused by the new sequel trilogy. Something larger was happening. Something that went beyond the Star Wars cinematic films. Many believed that fans were witnessing the beginning of the end of Star Wars. People questioned if it was on an inevitable decline that would result in the death of the franchise, while others believed it was dead already. There would be plenty of news outside of the movies to keep fans busy. Disney opened its theme park, Galaxy's Edge. The reviews, like the last movie, were very mixed. Another original cast member would be lost on April 30th, 2019, with the death of Peter Mayhew, the gentle giant who played fan favorite Chewbacca. Disney announced the production and revival of the animated series, The Clone Wars. Other announcements included future Star Wars productions that would be available on the Disney streaming service, Disney Plus. These projects included a Rogue One spin-off series, the Mandalorian, a new trilogy of movies that would not be in the Skywalker saga, and the return of Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi in a new series. Another thing that kept fans busy was discussing popular theories and leaks concerning Episode 9. As more theories, leaks, and potential spoilers hit the news, more and more fans would claim that they no longer care about the franchise and that this current version of Star Wars, helmed by the Walt Disney Corporation, was not their Star Wars.
As we've stated earlier, it's very hard to be blindly optimistic when we, Star Wars fans, have been dumped on for a few years. From bad filmmaking to bad PR, Disney has run you off and there's nothing wrong with that. It's your prerogative. Speaking of, it seems to be J.J. Abrams' prerogative to try and f*** the fans once again. This time, he's claiming that the Episode 8 didn't derail anything. While I doubt that, I'm glad that the question is out there. I mean, was it always the plan to kill off Luke Skywalker and make his journey amount to nothing? Was it always the plan to have the Rebellion, <clears throat> the Resistance, down to 14 people? Was it always the plan to have Snoke be a nobody? Just like Rey? Kathleen Kennedy sat there and lied to everyone and told them that she was going to stay true to the message that George Lucas told. And she was going to stay true to the characters and the story and the universe that George Lucas built. And she threw that all aside. She lied to everyone. I'm so frustrated because I had so much hope. When I first found out that Disney was taking over Star Wars, I was so excited. I was so excited because Disney, the founder of my childhood, right? The place where I went to go and relive my youth. And it's just turned into a complete and utter catastrophe. Every year, fans look forward to Star Wars Celebration. On April 12th, 2019, Celebration would take place in Chicago. The cast of the sequel trilogy, with the exception of Mark Hamill, would be reunited during the Episode 9 panel. Fans would be treated with the first viewing of the teaser and would learn the official name of Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> Fans would be in for a surprise at the end of the teaser. Roll it again. What did I think of the teaser? Well, I said the other day that I thought it was never been more important in Star Wars history for a trailer to be good. It didn't have to be the best trailer ever, but it's never been more important for a Star Wars trailer to be good and be solid, uh, especially coming off of the divisiveness of Star Wars Episode Eight. It was vital that it's good. And I'll say this. <clears throat> I thought the trailer was good. This is it. It's out. The Star Wars Episode Nine trailer from the Star Wars Celebration in Chicago. I'm scared to yeah, watch the it. The last one left How? a bad taste in my mouth. So uh, the Last Jedi, to say the least, has aged very poorly. I freaking hate it. I'm one of those that thinks that it it uh, helps divide the Star Wars fan base and it de destroys a lot of the lore. Irreparable. Just a stupid movie. I hate it. Um, doesn't exist. Uh, initially, you know, I liked it, but we can talk more about that later. Now, that is in the past. Let the past die, <laughs> right? Yes, Let well. us see if J.J. Abrams can somehow redeem it, right, for those of us that didn't like it. What is this? Oh, is that the radar dish from the Death Star? <laughs> Were they back on Endor? Skywalker. I don't immediately love that, but I'm already getting used to it. Without respect, we reject. It doesn't matter if they dust off Lando. It doesn't matter if they bring Palpatine back from the dead. It doesn't matter if they bring in Snoke, or they have Kylo Ren with his helmet fixed, or they have the amazing Wonder Ray doing backward flips gymnastics in the desert. It doesn't matter if we have C-3PO firing a bowcaster. It doesn't matter what degradations they put Chewbacca to. I am boycotting this movie, and I'm calling for everyone who is a true fan of Star Wars to boycott this movie. Before the official trailer would be released, Lucasfilm would offer the world a glimpse of the new movie with a preview at D23. There seemed to be a sudden shift in promotional strategy. 
With The Last Jedi, Lucasfilm was keen to say, let the past die. With a new sizzle reel at D23, it seemed Lucasfilm would call upon the past to provide a sense of nostalgia to promote the new film. The Star Wars franchise would continue to be on shaky ground. On September 23rd, there was big news of Bob Iger's memoir titled The Ride of a Lifetime, Lessons Learned from 15 Years as CEO of the Walt Disney Company. Excerpts from the book depicted a very upset George Lucas with the direction of the sequel trilogy. So they decided they didn't want to use those stories. They decided they were going to go do their own thing, and so I decided fine but basically i'm not going to try to they weren't that keen to have me involved anyway but at the same time i said i'm not going to if i get in there i'm just going to cause trouble because they're not going to do what i want them to do so and i don't have the control to do that anymore and all i would do is muck everything up so i said okay i will go my way and i'll let them go their way bob Iger says in his book i read george's outlines and decided we needed to buy them so we made clear in the purchase agreement that we would not be contractually obligated to adhere to the plot lines he'd laid out. He knew that I was going to stand firm on the question of creative control, but it wasn't an easy thing for him to accept, and so he reluctantly agreed to be available to consult with us at our request. I promised that we would be open to his ideas, but like the outlines, we would be under no obligation. George immediately got upset as they, Michael Arndt and Kathleen Kennedy, began to describe the plot and it dawned on him that we weren't using one of the stories he submitted during the negotiations. Now in the first meeting with him about the future of Star Wars, George felt betrayed. With this news, supporters of the sequel trilogy could no longer deny the fan outcry that something was amiss with this trilogy. The final trailer for The Rise of Skywalker would drop during Monday Night Football on October 21st. Tickets were also available for pre-sale. Yeah, that's just Star Wars Episode Nine. I have no hype, uh, but I'm not angry. I'm not. I'm not like purposefully going against it, trying to bash it. I, I just don't really care. I'm not looking for the highest news when I'm scrolling YouTube. I'm not really looking at people's videos that much for it. I mean, some if it looks like it might sort of catch my eye as a video to watch, but I don't really care for the speculation of Episode Nine. I don't care for. The news that comes out about it, I don't care what Ryan Johnson says. I mean, his movie's done. It's over. That was over a year ago. Uh, we had it. We got our say out. We got most of what we, you know, all all our concerns out. And we, you know, responded back to people that were saying crap about us. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just kind of done talking about it. Fans and critics alike would have to wait less than two months for the December nineteenth release date. The Rise of Skywalker, rated PG-13, not playing. These stars will be out in Hollywood tonight as the final chapter in the Star Wars saga makes it into its world premiere. It seemed a large percentage of the general audience favored this movie a lot more than The Last Jedi. It's opening night and the force is strong with the first crowds to see the rise of Skywalker. It was a really fun night out here at the movies and most of the people that we spoke with said they were really happy with the way this film turned out. Many of them lowered their expectations so they wouldn't be let down after the first round of film reviews were rather critical of the storyline. Now this film has been getting mixed reviews in the press, but the fans say the force is still strong. Almost got teary eyed for that. <laughs> oh, it was exciting. A lot of tear jerkers. Oh, I will be you definitely sing it again. <laughs> Several times. <laughs> Probably the best in the trilogy, this new trilogy. And I think it did justice. There was some course correction that I think was well needed. And this movie was so incredibly good. I mean, this was so 
So well done. This movie, Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker, in my opinion, was really amazing. I think I liked it. I think there's definitely parts about it that I liked. There's definitely scenes in it I like, and there's definitely plot points and ideas that I liked. The movie was great. Knowing the leaks beforehand helped me know what to prepare for, so I wasn't surprised at anything. It was a fun movie to watch, nice story, closure. It's good. As time has gone on, people have kind of forgotten what Star Wars was about. And really, it was just about, like, you know, having a good time, uh, you know, transporting yourself to a land far, far away, and just, just enjoying something new. Disney is expecting weekend sales to reach about $160 million. Sounds like a lot of money, but that will still be about $60 million less than when The Last Jedi opened two years ago. Just like before, to their horror, Many left the theater disgusted and in disbelief in several of the creative choices made by Lucasfilm. Hi everyone, so uh, I just finished watching Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> oh my god. It's a mixture, it's a mixture of emotions right now. It really is. <laughs> this is just, this is dumb. This is so, so very, very dumb. I'm just, I'm just kind of, I like, I can't believe it. I honestly can't believe what I just watched. I just can't. I. Well, we're here. <laughs> we saw it. Uh, the Rise of Skywalker, I'm glad people like it. It just seems like we're back where we started. Here we go. How did we get here? What happened? Like, what happened to Star Wars? What happened? Where are we? What weird alternate dimension am I in? Now, is this as bad or worse or better than The Last Jedi? I don't know. I think they all suck. I, uh... I liked this movie, but also hated it with every part of my being at the same time. We'll get your thoughts later. Hated it. <laughs> hated it. It is not a film that I, I would suggest wasting money on. I would have want nothing more than to go in that theater and just forget about all the stuff online and the leaks and whatever else BS there's out there and to just be a fan of Star Wars and to have my popcorn and just go into a galaxy far, far away and fall in love with it and just be a little kid again. And I, I went in with that intent and I couldn't because it felt like a studio rushing through beats to please every fan they could try and check off the list and try and justify a lot of the things they did and you could just see it on screen. The Rise of Skywalker is my least favorite of the nine core saga films. I saw some people say this movie's bold, like it, made, it had some bold decisions. I, I didn't see anything bold in here. There's nothing bold about this movie. There's a difference between bold and desperate. This film doesn't take away from my Star Wars fandom. I still love Star Wars just as much. It doesn't diminish my love of Star Wars <clears throat> in any way. It surpassed my expectations on how indescribably dumb it is and it's as related to the last Jedi. I'm a bit for one. I'm a bit speechless on how actually dumb it is, even though I knew what was going to happen because the leaks were 100, 1000% correct. There are scenes that I thought were really great. There's just so, so much in this film 
that didn't work for me. That Rise of Skywalker is shaping up to be an utter freaking disaster. You've got reviews like this from our good friend Scott Mendelson, who's been known to be a shill, but even he is saying Rise of Skywalker is the worst Star Wars movie ever. Ever. Uh, the story felt very convoluted and rushed at times in all acts of the film as that the movie was multiple movies in one where even at times it didn't take enough time to focus on some of the core characters. I left the film uh, conflicted. Uh, I think that there are some good things that they tried to do in the film and I think they also faced a number of really large obstacles in trying to button up every storyline that had been started, uh, not just in The Force Awakens, but also tried to be continued in, the, in, in um, the Last Jedi. So there was a lot of material to try to juggle. And when, when they tried to add um, buttons to all of those storylines and make every fan satisfied by what happened, I think they struggled a little bit with that. I think this is a movie that a lot of people are gonna like. It's got some um, big highlight moments. JJ went for some stuff that's very different and very bold, and I applaud him for it. Like I said, I think a lot of people are gonna really like this movie. Unfortunately, I'm not one of them. Uh, I gotta say, I don't ever remember walking out of a Star Wars movie as disappointed as I was in this one. <sighs> How? How are the people that we've always considered to be the shills, how are they now not liking this? Uh, this thing is, is just a mess. It's a mess through and through. And all it does is destroy Anakin's sacrifice, Luke's story, Palpatine is a joke. I'll say this first as a caveat kind of for the entire conversation. We just saw the movie, we've seen it once, and it's definitely a movie I think everyone's going to need to see more than once to fully process and frankly even remember because it is incredibly complex. Uh, if you are, are so inclined, you could say convoluted. The pace is completely overwhelming. And obviously you're also dealing with the conclusion not only of character arcs from the sequel trilogy, but of certain storylines for, as you just noted, four plus decades of movie making. That's a lot to digest and to know how to feel about it and also just to understand. So I didn't feel great about it. So Star Wars Episode Nine is a four hour movie they crushed into two and a half hours because it feels like this movie probably should have been a lot longer. Uh, and the movie Rise of Skywalker plays like two movies on fast forward. It's hard to overstate just how disastrous this film is in terms of Star Wars canon. Sheev Palpatine has died in these movies before and then he came back. So I need you to explain to me fully that he's really dead here. Because otherwise I just think his essence is just out there still. Is they're, he going to go inhabit somebody else? They're not going to. In 25 years from now, there might be another Palpatine movie. That's the thing is I, a lot of it, a lot of the actual story mechanics feel unexamined. And they fe it feels like they were written quickly. Well, um... It's going to be an absolute but I can fix it. The pacing in this movie is absolutely atrocious. What bothered me the most about this movie is that the story is so messy. In this film, Kylo is on a mission to do a thing. Rey and the rest of the Resistance are also doing a thing. And the Emperor is in the movie doing a thing. But as a story, it's very convoluted and extremely messy. As a conclusion to a trilogy, it feels even more messy when you look back at the three films and you see that they just don't really fill a cohesive whole. It, it, you know when you finish watching a movie and you go to the restroom to pee, especially if you're a guy? That was the saddest and most quiet pee session I've ever been part of. Everyone was just like quiet and just like shaking their heads. Anybody want to tell me what they thought about it? Anybody? Thumbs up right there? Thumbs up? Okay, good. I would say that this film is a mess. The, 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 all of the, the leaks that you've heard are true and, and then some. It's a mess. It's, the writing in this film is atrocious. Uh, for me, I went into the movie looking for restitution. And I don't feel like I got that. The one thing that J.J. should have done it's very simple. If, you, if you're going to retcon anything about The Last Jedi, it's bringing Luke back. That's what so many fans wanted. They wanted Luke Skywalker back in the flesh. And 
instead we get like a little five minute force go scene with him. Another thing this movie didn't do so great is illustrate the threat level. You know, threat, fear of danger, that's kind of what makes an adventure thrilling. But there's a scene where they're running through this place just massacring stormtroopers. Bullseyes every time, no need to take cover ever. Which tells the audience there's no need to worry, which means no threat, which means no thrill, which means boring. Yeah, I mean, I love a good god mode code myself, but once in a while, don't make it the movie. In the very beginning, everything's just randomly happening, nothing's explained. They say about a year or so has passed by since the last film, but you feel like you've missed two two or three movies worth of exposition because characters have changed, the, uh, the, the direction of the characters has changed a lot, and it really just goes to show you that this might be one of the worst trilogies of all time, only in the fact that the movies don't connect. But I was like, okay, maybe the movie just starts out a little choppy, but the choppiness stays with the movie for quite some time. Doesn't help that there's not a lot of intrigue at all. I mean, anytime there could be intrigue, it's like someone pops into frame to explain something. It's like, oh, uh, what would they need with that? I'm just popping into frame to tell you that that's what it is. Okay, let's go do the thing then. But what should we do? You should go to that planet. Go there. All right, now we know. It doesn't feel like there's an organic unraveling of information as much as there is just exposition vomit. So it needs to be said, yes, the movie does feel like a bit of a hot mess highlight reel of a Reddit wish list of Easter eggs and references. Like they weren't quite sure how they wanted to end things and JJ Abrams came in really late. They didn't have a lot of time to finish the script. So they said, what can we give fans that they will hate the least? The third act at a point just felt ridiculous. Only word I can use to describe it is ridiculous. It's like Abrams was like, we got to do really big stuff. Let's do big stuff. It's like this movie, or at least the third act, was made by someone who likes Star Wars-ish things, but doesn't really know the Star Wars lore. There are rules in Star Wars. So as soon as I walked out of the theater, I looked at my wife and I said, I'm guessing that has a 61% on Rotten Tomatoes. Just a gut feeling. Just a number that popped into my head that I was throwing out there based on my feelings at that moment. And she said, it has a 58. And I went, huh, because that was kind of in line with where my head was at. And then I asked her what the audience score was, and she said an 86. And I whipped around and I said, what? Here's the thing. It's got an audience score of 87%. Now, the critics are out there trying to blame us for this disaster, and that's their spin. It's almost like they got together and agreed upon a narrative, uh, maybe even maybe even a narrative that came from Disney, if we want to play some 4D chess here, uh, because if you notice, they don't really, the only thing they blamed Disney for was trying to please the fans, uh, which wasn't what they were trying to do at all. You have Rey, our main protagonist of the story. Now, if you, like me, took issue with her sort of Mary Sue-ness uh, prior to this film and the fact that she was able to do so many things without good explanation as to how or why, uh, you will not be satisfied within this film. Rey is now at peak boss level Mary Sue in this film. Like, if you thought the Mary Sue problem was going to be resolved in this film, you are going to be sorely disappointed because not only is it not resolved, it just gets worse. She is so overpowered in this film. It is absurd and it creates all sort of stupid contradictions. Ray is so OP in this movie. She's so, she is so overpowered. She's more powerful here than you've ever seen her. Moments where our main trio was supposed to be, uh, I suppose, depicting their relationship to us, their friendship to us. Also, are they friends? Are, are Poe, Finn, and Ray, are they actually friends? One thing I noticed in this movie, you look at Return of the Jedi, you even look at Anakin and Obi-Wan by the time Revenge of the Sith happens, at least in the first part. They have their bickering, Obi-Wan rolls his eyes a few times, shakes his head, maybe. But you can tell they do have a friendship. There's a kinship there. Everyone in Return of the Jedi is like, all kumbaya all the time. One time, Han Solo kind of exploded on Leia. Could you tell Luke? Is that who you could tell? He's like, all right, come here. I'm, just sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Rise of Skywalker, they just, they bicker and argue over each other all the time. That kind of arguing that just gets your anxiety up. You're like, God, can, you all can't wait for this to end too, huh? Oh, man. If you're on the fence, just save your money. Don't give it to Disney, please. Please, I I wanted to see, this for me was like, I wanted to attend Star Wars' funeral, 
Like, I just wanted to go. I figured I'd give my respects. I wanted to see how my favorite franchise died. And I... That's why. If it was up to me, like, if I knew what I knew now, I would go back and not give Disney my money because I just feel so horrible. Look, I have to say that overall, uh, I think that the Star Wars has been a tremendous disappointment because, unfortunately, it was the first time where corporate interests were more important than an individual man's creative vision. It's a fact of life that when a corporation like Disney buys your product, Disney was buying Star Wars with the express purpose of selling it to the most amount of people on multiple platforms. Theme parks, apparel, toys, and then of course movies and TV shows. But when you do that, that means that a corporation's interests always come before the truth of the story that you want to be telling. And I, I think that's no way to make films. But if people were to allow this whole trilogy to stand and just sort of carry on as if it's now part of of the actual canon, the lore, the mythology of Star Wars, what does this mean? Well, what it would mean is this, that basically Disney have now completely um, destroyed, well not completely, but they have hugely undermined and done major damage to the original source material. They have actually actively attacked the mythology of Star Wars by doing what they have done. So this isn't just some sloppy writing, this is things and decisions and storytelling decisions that are so bad that they now have profound ramifications for the original trilogy, the original story, the original mythology, the original source material. Uh, they have taken one of the greatest stories in uh, American history. I mean, really, probably the greatest story in American history as far as film is concerned and flushed it down the toilet so they could get a few extra bucks so they can squeeze the blood out of the nostalgia turnip. I would say to to people that, that what needs to happen now is Disney just needs to stop making Star Wars movies full stop and, and, and they need to have a very serious, cold, hard re-evaluation and an honest critique and evaluation of their own performance and all of this. It really has been an insane ride. It's finally come to a close with the rise of Skywalker and finally, like Leia slowly waking up in dead space after being blown out of her transport in The Last Jedi, I woke up to the fact that something I once loved was changed forever. But suffice it to say, for a fan of that galaxy far, far away, the rise of Palpatine is the fall of Star Wars. From the center of the earth, this is Dictor Van Doomcock bidding you all, my friends, stay angry. All right, dude. It's been 28 years. And it's finally over. Yeah, all done. Until, until the next one. As individual movies, you can argue that they're good or bad. But as a trilogy of films, it is a disjointed mess. Look, I don't hate JJ, I don't hate Ryan, I don't hate Kathleen. I'm frustrated, but I do think uh, this sequel trilogy was a letdown. That's the inherent problem uh, of when a corporation buys something, a corporation doesn't know how to tell a story. Only an individual knows how to tell a story. Only a human being knows how to tell a story. The Force Awakens attempted to retcon the original trilogy. The Last Jedi attempted to retcon The Force Awakens and the original trilogy. The Rise of Skywalker attempts to retcon just about everything. Lucasfilm has no clue what they're doing. No one there respects the IP or the process of writing in these films, and as a result, we have a worthless trilogy that can honestly be watched without The Last Jedi now. Like, if you pretend that Snoke and Luke have 
had heart attacks from TFA, everything plays out. Except, of course, for all the damage that's been dealt to those wonderful movies set in a galaxy far, far away. As if it wasn't enough to assassinate Han, as if it wasn't enough to assassinate Luke, you had to rip the victory of Anakin Skywalker right out of his hands. That fool didn't kill the Emperor. Anakin didn't bring balance to the Force because Palpatine never died. Anakin didn't save the galaxy because the First Order rose not long after. Palpatine survived. Anakin didn't end the war and save those heroes of this world because they all ended up humiliated and or dead. They didn't win at the end of that movie. If anything, you could skip the OT because it's mostly inconsequential to the greater saga of Rey versus Palpatine. And none of these characters behave like themselves anyway. That is the legacy of Disney Star Wars. So whether you loved it or hated it, the Disney sequel trilogy has ended, and many fans wonder, where will Star Wars go from here? Only time will tell, but we hope it returns to the love of the past.